Today I have a problem from Anger 2022. This is the admissions test you had to do if you wanted to study engineering at Cambridge University. This is an interesting problem, even from a mathematician's point of view. Um, we'll have a look at it and then we'll look at the mathematician's problem, which is going to be the slightly harder one because, of course, mathematicians are smarter than engineers. Uh, we're going to look at the generalization of this problem. So let's have a look at this one to begin with. We have three different numbers are chosen at random from root one, root two, root three, root four and root five. What is the probability that the three numbers form the sides of a right angled triangle? OK, cool. Let's have a look at this. So we're going to choose three of these uh, kind of lengths and clearly they're all roots of positive integers. So we're going to call them root A, root B and root C. And without loss of generality, A is going to be less than B is going to be less than C. And I know this because they're all different. OK. What are the conditions I need to make a right angle triangle? Well, there's the obvious one, which is Pythagoras' theorem, and that will tell us that A plus B must equal C. But what we also must check is if we have this condition, does it genuinely form a right angle triangle? You, you know, does it satisfy the triangle inequality? And I guess maybe you could argue that, well, if it satisfies this, it must, because Pythagorean triples must satisfy the uh, the triangle inequality. But let's just check to be to be safe. So does root A plus root B uh, that must be at least root C. And this is true if and only if, well, if I square both sides, this inequality upholds. And I'm allowed to square both sides here because both of these terms are non-negative, in fact, strictly positive here. And I get A plus B plus 2 root AB is at least C. And now we can see that this is obviously true because if A plus B equals C, those cancel out and I get 2 root AB is at least 0, which is obviously true. And thus, root A plus root B will be at least root C. And so this will genuinely form a right angle triangle, uh, form a triangle under this condition here that A plus B equals C. Um, but that's kind of obvious because it is a, once you satisfy the Pythagorean uh, condition of A squared plus B squared is C squared, um, in this case, A plus B equals C, you must be a right angle triangle and thus a triangle. Anyway, let's have a look. Um, so here we've got five numbers. We're choosing three of them. Let's whip out five, choose three, which is five times four over two times one, which is 10. So there's 10 possible ways to select three of these numbers. And now we need to choose them so that they satisfy this equation, a plus b equals c. And we can kind of just do this by inspection here. So a, b, c, one possibility is one, two, three. Another possibility is 1, 3, 4. Another possibility is 1, 4, 5. So these are the only possibilities where A is 1. OK, what if we make A now 2? And now there's only one possibility. If A is 2, B has to be strictly bigger than A. So it would have to be at least 3. And at that point, C is just about 5. And we can't go any bigger because if I made A or B any bigger, C would be bigger than 5, which isn't possible here. And so we get four different uh, solutions here. So the answer is 4 over 10, or in other words, 2 fifths. Uh, and that would be the answer. So this question was actually multiple choice, uh, but I've eliminated the uh, options just to make this a little bit more interesting. OK, uh, let's look at the mathematical generalization. So a slightly more interesting problem is if what if we make this up to root n? So if we're choosing three numbers from root 1, root 2, root 3, all the way up to root n, like so. And here n is a positive integer at least three. Well, we can apply kind of the same approach here. So there's going to be n choose three ways of uh, uh, selecting three numbers. And n choose three is n times n minus one times n minus two over three factorial, which is six. Um, maybe, yeah, maybe I'll just write that as six. <clears throat> OK, and now how many ways are there to pick uh, kind of two of these numbers uh, here uh, and such, such that the third number is also kind of, in, you know, so, so that we satisfy this a plus b equals c condition. What we can do kind of a similar thing. We can say a solution is um, 1, 2, uh, and then that would have to be 3. Then we can go 1, 3, 4. And we can kind of continue like this until we get to 1, n minus 1, n, like so. Great. OK. Then the next solution would be 2, 3, 5, 2, 4, 6, and so on. And I could go up to 2, n minus 2 n, like so. Now, how many solutions are there in this first row? Well, notice that we're going from 2 up to n minus 1, so there'd be n minus 2 solutions there. Um, here, we're going from 3 up to n minus 2, so there's n minus 3 solutions there, and you can maybe see where we're going with this. The next one would be 3, 4, 7, 3, 5, 8, 
and so on up to 3 n minus 3 n and we're going from 4 to n minus 3 so there's n minus uh oh hold on a second ah sorry that's not n minus 3 that's supposed to be n minus 4 my bad so that's n minus 4 because obviously 1 to n minus 2 would be n minus 4 but we're going from 3 to n minus 2 so we're missing off 1 and 2 and so there's n minus 4 like kind of brackets there here there's going to be n minus six because we're going up to n minus three but we're, we're starting from four so we're missing out one two and three so n minus three minus three is n minus six and you can kind of see the pattern here n minus two n minus four n minus six we're going to kind of keep doing this until we get down to depending on whether n is odd or even either one or two so we can kind of split this into two cases depending on whether n is odd or n is even so if n is even this kind of sum is going to give us n minus 2 plus n minus 4 plus n minus 6 all the way down to 2. Um, and if we just factor, all of these terms here are even. So we can factor out a 2 from them and we get uh, n minus two, uh, 2 over 2. In fact, maybe if n is even, maybe it's easier just to say uh, n is 2k or something. So let me just go and do that. So if n is even, oh, doesn't want to. So n is 2k. Um, so we've got 2k minus 2 plus 2k minus 4 and so on down to 2. And if we factor out a 2, then that's just k minus 1 plus k minus 2 plus so on down to 1. And this is a formula we should be happy with. This is k minus 1 times k all over 2. So that'll just be k times k minus 1. And if maybe if we want to put that back in terms of n, that's n over 2 times n over 2 minus 1, like so. Uh, okay, so that would be the expression when n is even. What if n is odd? Well, n is then 2k plus 1 for some integer positive, uh, technically, yeah, positive integer k because n is at least 3. Uh, and we do the same thing. So we're going to get uh, n minus 2. So that would be, in this case, 2k minus 1 plus 2k minus 3 and so on, all the way down to uh, 3 plus 1. And now this expression here, you can evaluate in a few different ways, but it's just an arithmetic sum at the end of the day. How many terms are there here? Well, there's precisely a uh, K of them. Let me just double check that. Yes, there's going to be K terms here. So it's going to be K over two times two times, uh, let's start from this side. So two times A, two times one, plus N minus one times D. So K minus one times the difference here, which is two. Um, so here I've just used the formula for an arithmetic sum, like so. And if I expand this out, I can cancel the twos and I get k1 plus k minus 1, uh, which is just k squared, like so. So uh, if n is odd, you get k squared, which is just uh, n minus 1 over 2 squared. Um, okay, cool. And so I'm just going to call this kind of f of n. So f of n equals... Um, either n over 2 times n over 2 minus 1, that's if n is even, or it's going to equal n minus 1 over 2 squared when n is odd. And so therefore, the I, I'll call this probability p, the thing that we're interested in, the probability that the three randomly chosen sides form a right angle triangle is simply going to be f of n over n choose 3. We can maybe simplify that to 6 f of n over n, n minus 1, n minus 2 like so. And that there would be our final answer. So it's a pretty cool little problem here um, for, for a generalization. Obviously, this was in the engineering test, it was just a specific case of uh, root 1, root 2, root 3, root 4, root 5 up here. Um, you can see my first attempt at filming the video up here. Um, and yeah, uh, it's nice to generalize it. It's a pretty cool problem. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. I'm going to stop waffling on. Have a good rest of your day. Thanks so much for watching. Take care.